In this video, we're going to look at making cross tabulations using the pivot table tool in Microsoft Excel 2016. And a cross tabulation is just like a frequency distribution, except it allows you to look at two variables at once. You could either look at two qualitative or categorical variables, or two quantitative variables, or one of each kind. So let's have a look here. Today we're looking at a data set. This is a an old data set. It's over 20 years old now. Looking at some characteristics of cars. Even though this is a very old data set, it's still an interesting one for making tables and looking at relationships. So if we want to make a cross tabulation, we have to pick two variables. Let me just describe some of these characteristics of cars. We have type. Is it small, midsize, a van, a sports car? We have the minimum price with without many options on it, the average price and the maximum price. This would be a fully loaded car with all of the options. We have the horsepower, highway miles per gallon, engine size in liters, fuel tank capacity in gallons, the length of the car, the weight, the wheelbase, the um, width of the car, the how tight you can turn the car around in a U-turn, rear seat leg room, and some of these are going to be missing because some cars didn't have rear seats. Luggage room in the trunk. Again, some of these cars don't have trunks. And whether it's foreign or domestic, so import or domestic car. So let's just uh, grab a couple of these variables and let's look at making a cross tabulation. So let's start off by making a, let's just use these first two variables. The type of car, which is categorical, and the minimum price. So let's highlight these two variables and then we'll go to insert pivot table. Now keep in mind when you do a pivot table you need to have your data all in one column or two columns well you know all arranged each variable in one column plus you have to have a title up top here. And pivot table gives you a lot of options you can do right at the beginning but I don't find that useful so I just hit OK. Now what Excel gives us is over here on the right is where you want to focus. It has the two variables we selected, an area for filters, an area for the column variables, row variables, and the values that we want it to add up or count up. So let's choose, just for no particular reason, let's put the type of vehicle in the columns. And here you see the list of the various kinds of vehicles that are listed in the data set. And let's put the prices, the minimum, the cheapest you could probably expect to get these cars for in the rows. And so it lists the types up in the columns. It lists all the unique values. And these prices are in thousands of dollars. So 6.7 means $6.7,000. So it's just listing all the unique values in the data set. And then what I would suggest here is let's drag the type. So I'm left clicking with the mouse, dragging type down to values. Why I'm picking that variable instead of the price is if we drag the type, what Excel is automatically going to do is it's going to count up how frequently we see these combinations. So here we see there are two cars that are small and cost $7,300. If we drug, let's drag that out of here, and if, if instead we put the minimum price in the values, what Excel wants to do by default is add up the prices to sum them. And we see that in the tiny writing down here, sum of minimum price. So if you drag a quantitative variable there, it's going to want to add them up. And we could always change that. We could click the drop down area, arrow, go to value field settings and change it to count. But that takes a lot more time than simply dragging a categorical variable and it will automatically count them up. The on only a couple of things we have left to do here to make a, a decent looking table is instead of having each value listed individually, just as if for any 
quantitative variable, we want to group these variables. So you want to click on one of these numbers over here and right click with your mouse button and go down to group. And we want to tell Excel how to group these variables. So what Excel says here is it's going to start at 6.7 thousand go up to the, that's the lowest value, go up to the highest value, 45,400, and do it by 10 groups of 10,000. I think that's fine, except you're going to have a very awkward looking table if you started at $6,700. Let's just do that just to see what it does. You see these ranges here are a bit awkward, starting going from 6.7 thousand to 16.7. So let's right click again and let's just change that. Let's have it start at maybe $5,000. And that gives us categories that are a lot nicer, a lot easier to read. Um, so we could use $10,000 as our width or again, right click. We could have a look and see what grouping them in bins or classes of $5,000 would look like. And this is just your preference how many categories you would like to break those up into. Perhaps $10,000 is good enough. So let's just make the, the table a little simpler and go back to the $10,000. Now, two additional changes we might want to make. First, I highly recommend um, changing the default behavior that Excel has here, where if there is not an observation in an area like here there's not a car or a vehicle between thirty five thousand and forty five thousand dollars that is a compact understandably so compact cars are probably cheaper than that um, but instead of leaving a blank we probably want to put a zero there the blanks are just awkward to me so right click somewhere in the middle of the table here and let's go to Pivot Table Options, and this little area here has a checkbox for Empty Cells Show, and instead of a blank, tell it to put a zero. That's going to give us a much nicer looking table there. We might also want to change the order of some of these. Now, these categories are not strictly ordinal because even though compact, small, midsize, and large do seem to have an order to them, Sporty and Van, it's not clear what kind of order you would put those in, but still it might make sense to reorder compact, small, midsize, and large here. So click on midsize, right click, and let's go to move, and we can move midsize up. Really what it's going to do is it's going to move it left, right? So now we have compact, midsize, large. Let's move small. So move up. Right click, move up. And so now these first four are in an order that makes sense. The last thing I, I highly recommend you do is to highlight the results here, copy them to another sheet, and then clean up these titles. The reason why I recommend not highlighting the top row is that there are some programming elements, like see the little drop down box here, and that's going to make it impossible for you to edit this title, Row Labels, which is actually probably not the greatest title for what those represent. So I'd recommend just copying the bottom part, Control C, go to a new, new worksheet, and paste those. Now let's see if we can actually um, copy those, just these labels here. Whoop, compact, small, midsize, sporty, and van. That would just save us a little bit of typing. Yeah, there we go. And then total. I don't like the word grand total. I don't understand what's what's grand about it. It's just a total. Uh, and here we might call this a price bin instead of row labels, right? Because if you're showing someone this title, sorry, this uh, table, they're not going to know that these represent prices. We probably want that to be the same color, so we can just use the Format Painter 
So click on the compact over here, Format Painter. Click on Price Bin. That'll make it bold and have the little blue background. The last thing I highly recommend is to center all these. It makes it a lot easier if you, you know, than if you have the label small left aligned and then the numbers right aligned. It helps you see which numbers go with which labels if they're all centered here. So what can we learn from looking at this? Is there some relationship between price and type of vehicle? Well, here we see all the small cars are in the cheapest category. And in terms of compact cars, most of them are in the cheaper, the lower level price levels here. Um, the mid sizes are all over the place. The larges are not as cheap as you would expect them to be, and, and sorry, not as expensive as you would expect them to be. Um, kind of interesting that most of them are in the next to the cheapest category here. So actually the most expensive cars are the mid sizes. The vans are relatively cheap. The sporty ones also mostly cheap. So not exactly what one would have expected here. So we learn something by doing this. Now, if you want you could, again, you could make a pivot table by using two quantitative variables, two categorical variables, and the steps would be very sim uh, similar. The only difference is if you have a, a quantitative variable, you're going to want to make sure to group those there. So I think that's probably long enough for this video. If you have any questions or if you want to see other examples, if you have any particular problems you see, please leave me a question in the comment section below. I'm going to come back with another video where we're going to look at scatter plots, where we can make a graph looking at two quantitative variables. So please join me for that.